great to be here. Um, so I'm Sam Val, and what I'm going to show you, I'm going to start with the demo because it's time sensitive, and I'm barely going to make it, I think. Um, but this is good fun. So here I am. I have an American Express credit card. And I have logged into my online bank. Oh, this is Chase. All right, I got American Express in another tab, but I'll sell it whichever one's still working. So I've logged in, and my credit card number is here, and my balance, and all that jazz. And I want to come back in, but I don't want to bother with my password. I'm just going to use the cookie. This Chrome extension lets me copy cookies. So that puts it in the clipboard. So now I can log off. And when I log off, if I try to go back to that page, which is down here, and view my account, it ought to not let me do that. And the network here is kind of slow, but presumably it will eventually get around to telling me that I'm not allowed to see that because I'm not logged in. This looks like progress. There we are, good. So now I can't see my account because I have to log in. Now that's what should happen. What should not happen is this. If I just put the cookies back in, without putting in my password. It shouldn't fall for that, but it does. I go back to that shortcut, I'm back logged in as me again. This is bad. This is really bad. And this is not the only site that has this problem. Now I found out about this because Microsoft had this problem for a long time. Um, last year, an article came out here in the Hacker News in November saying they told Microsoft that they had this problem on Outlook.com and um, Hotmail, and they told them, and Microsoft said, ah, we don't care. We're not going to have any plans to fix it anytime soon. It doesn't matter anyway. I said, boy, it matters. I got a Microsoft account from my college, an Office 365 account. I logged in, saved the cookie, logged out. I could get back in. Then I changed my password, and I could still get in with the old cookie. This is really bad. I always thought a password is like the worst thing a hacker could steal from you, but I guess a cookie is even worse, because there's nothing you can do but cancel your account to get rid of them. And uh, hopefully some of you web designers out there might know more than me exactly what's going on here. But people tell me they have to de destroy a key on the server for cryptography that has to do with cookie. But anyway, it's not impossible to fix. I went online looking for other people, and I found I could get into my American Express account without a password and my Chase account. But I saw a message that said, um, you're automatically logged out after 10 minutes of inactivity. And I found out that works for cookies, too. Cookies stop working 10 minutes later. So thank God for defense in depth. They have multiple controls, so even if one control fails, something else picks up some of the slack, so it's not quite that bad. Yeah? So, hey Sam, yeah. is it the, um, can you change the time on your cookie? I have not tried. Um, it's certainly not obvious how to. The cookie just contains what looks like random numbers to me, okay. so hopefully it's something like cryptographic hash or something. Um, but that's another fun game. I, look, I always take a look at the cookie to see what's in there, and the only thing I ever found is the New York Times cookies have the readable article headlines of all the articles I've read which is kind of rude, but anyway, um, yes, nice of it. So then I tried looking for other, so these guys found out Microsoft doesn't care, so I went and started checking other services. Now I see the big ones are American Express and Chase. Discover Card is not only not vulnerable, but they contacted me when I tweeted about this and said, what are you doing, are we, are we okay? And I said, boy, you guys are really on the ball. I told American Express and Chase, and I gave them a week to fix it in secret before I went public, and they responded immediately to a message saying, get back to me in 24 hours, which they never did at all. And now it's been like two weeks. So they're just asleep at the switch up there. Amazon surprised me. Although, to be fair, the Amazon cookie that I tested is just the one that identifies you to put your name up there. Now, when you actually make a purchase, it often asks you to log on again. There are levels of authentication at Amazon, and I didn't dig into that. Yeah? So on the expired, the 10-minute expired cookies, did you log in? It's a good question. I did not try that. I mean, the question is if you, you can log into the cookie and then keep it count doing things to keep it active. I would think, see, I think it would keep it alive. So I think what that means is if you write some kind of script to harvest cookies, you're also going to have to keep them alive. But you know, normally you get cookies across site scripting and you don't bother harvesting them until later. But there's lots of ways to get cookies. Um, and so, um, what else were mentioned here? Adobe was. I thought they were bad, but they were actually good. I couldn't reproduce it. They contacted me right away and said, why are we on the bad list? What exact site? And I couldn't reproduce it. So I think they're good. Um, and Gmail is good. So I quit exploring Google services. But when I put this out a couple weeks ago and some people started helping me, they tried other Google services. Even though Gmail is good, many other Google services are not good. 
And this is something I've heard about before. Google is now sort of a patchwork amalgamation of many services they've bought and sort of imperfectly integrated into their ecosystem. So you can't get in Gmail with an old cookie, but you can get in the Chrome App, App Store with an old cookie. And you can totally get in iCloud with an old cookie, which is kind of disturbing. You might your, your Apple account. Let me just do that. That was working pretty well. Here I'm signed into my App Cloud, iCloud. So if I export the cookie from that, and then I sign out, Some motion has happened. Ah, oh, there we go. So now I am unauthenticated in the iCloud, and if I go back to my shortcut to see my personal stuff, I can't get in. Then I put that cookie back in. It's the same story. Now I'm me again. And this is just bloody unhealthy. Now, what is the point of this log off button? I mean, I thought the point of that was, I wish to terminate this session, I don't want to get back in here without putting my password in again, but apparently not in the eyes of these developers. Well, I think they just haven't thought it through. They just delete the cookie in my browser, they think my only concern is that I can't need a computer to another person to use, and I don't want them getting in my account, and it does address that issue. But it doesn't do what a log off button should do. By the way, I tried some security companies, it occurred to me how bad would it be if the online password managers have this problem, and they don't. All the online password managers I could text have quite serious security measures, like they have a frame and you have to do everything in that frame, and if you do any kind of navigation, anything else, they, they terminate your session. They're not messing around. So that's somewhat comforting. Um, Cloudflare was bad, and I told them, and they fixed it, and then they pulled back the fix because they said it made more trouble, and then they worked on it another couple days, and then they fixed it, and now it stayed fixed. So um, it is possible to fix it, but I'm trying to get them into writing a blog on exactly what they did so I can send it to all these other clowns because they're, I assume they're just using some kind of pre-made standard code, which has this problem, and they don't really understand how to fix it, and they could probably benefit from some advice how to fix it, although nobody cares. Although, I'm kind of hoping, uh, showing the change in Manhattan and, uh, you know, American Express, this seems to get people's attention, perhaps, so maybe we'll eventually pressure them. By the way, of course, this is nothing new. Cookie reviews have been around forever. That's what the old, uh, what was fire sheet thing was years ago. It's just ridiculous that it never goes away. Like sequel injection, on and on and on, generation after generation of stuff comes out with the same stupid mistake, and all we can do is make theatrical, embarrassing dramas like this. This is my latest contribution to this, we try to put pressure on them. But it's not like this is a new discovery, far from it. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. And uh, by the way, if anybody doesn't know who I am, I'm all backwards here, but I didn't want my point you. That's who I am, I'm Sam Bell. Any questions about anything? Any more? Can you show some of your ideas? Um, well, I could. Maybe I will if there's more space on this. That's a thought. I could use it. Let me think about it. You're the last speaker of the day. Oh, there's a lot of space. I am, really? <laughs> Holy cow. Well, I'm glad real quick you signed the list again. No, no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to show some of this stuff at DEF CON, too, but here you are. Well, let me show you. Um, yeah, uh, just let me show you that. Uh, you've already seen this one. You saw this in the bay thread, I think. No, I didn't. Oh, I did? Okay, I started to like I've just right. seen it on the stuff you put up on, the, on your website with your students. Well, you, all right, let me see if I can bring it up. This, this is actually kind of a fun story. Um, so I have a lot of criminals that um, talk to me on Twitter. And um, so I gave a talk about two years ago at DEF CON about denial of service attacks. And I had a bunch of them. And this guy said, eh, I was looking at that talk, and why didn't you talk about in the first place, why do you teach backtrack Linux? That stuff is lame, that stuff is for losers, you must be dumb. And in second place, why didn't you talk about sock stress? How many people have heard of sock stress? Yeah, I mean, sock stress was the raging heat in 2008. In 2008, there's this scary rumor that came out because of a podcast that there was this new attack that would kill everything that used TCP, and oh my God, it's the end of the world. And everybody panicked, and then it just never happened. And I hunted like everybody else. I just Googled online to find some source code. I found some stuff that didn't work. And I said, well, that was just vaporware. I guess that never really happened. And it did happen. But what happened is the man that designed it died. And he didn't get to go to the <laughs> hacker cons and demonstrate the dog and pony show um, and show us all this cool stuff. And, that, and actually, the attack is pretty hard to do. So I tried doing it on Backtrack. I found the old code. The guy said, you got the wrong code. You got the wrong operating system. What an idiot you are. And he kept bothering me. So I finally went and got Slackware. And you have to get old Slackware. And even then, it's pretty much of a pain. Half the stuff you need doesn't work. So, but this guy kept taunting me and saying, 
if, if you weren't just an idiot, it would work. And he's right. Ultimately, it does work. It's just not easy to set up, but I think it's pretty cool because it works. He takes down real web servers with it right and left. Uh, let me see what state I've left this horrible machine in. Um, all right. I got many machines, but any machine will do for a target as long as it hasn't already been clobbered or something. Um, let's try shift control escape. All right. Oh, good. So this machine has one gig of RAM, of which half a gig are used. That's a Windows uh, 7 machine. That'll do. Let me put it on host-only networking and check the IP address. You caught me in a little off balance here. I can, let me see if I've got a good IP address on this thing. Necessarily tied to IPv6, it's a layer 4 attack. Um, it's local I because this is server 2012, so it's like Windows 8. All right. Yeah. There's another guy after me? No. Okay. All right. I don't know how that works. Yeah, I don't know how that works. Yet. That's why I told you to keep on. It's already finished, my no, first. By all means, you okay, fair enough. With it. Anyway, I wanted to, I'll demonstrate this because this is fun. Um, all right, let me get my attacker running and explain what it's doing because it is. A little complicated. Okay. To make this work, you have to have a lot of ports listening on the target, and you have to attack from a whole botnet. But it doesn't have to be a real botnet, it can be a simulated botnet, because you have to make a lot of connections. And so let me get my target going here. Do you have to have a lot of unique destination IP addresses? You have to have a lot of what? Do you have to, when you said a lot of connections, it could be one machine, or do you have to have a spread of routes that you're hitting? It can be one machine, but you have to come from many IP addresses, and that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Yeah. Um, Did you lose screen? So What's that? Oh, I lost my screen? Oh, my hand could be telling. The table can be <laughs> Okay, good. So um, let me see if I can get my attacker going, which is that Linux machine. There we are. Okay, so this is Slackware. So there are two things I have to run here. Um, this one is the ARP poisoning part. And what this does is, it's a simple script I wrote in, in Scapy, and all it does is listen for ARC requests, and whatever the target asks for, it gives it my MAC address. So I can run many IP addresses from one MAC address, and the target thinks they're all different machines. That's how I simulate a botnet, a botnet of 127 machines. Um, then the attack runs here, and I think I just have to do that. That'll probably do. And let me. Um, Go to here and get my desktop. Let's see. There it is. Good. And then shift, control, escape. There we are. Glorious task manager. So this is my Windows 2012 server. It's got a gig of RAM and half of it isn't currently in use. The rest of the CPU is doing nothing. Uh, CPU is 1% because there's nothing happening on here. That is the target. And the point of this is TCP has flow control. If the server is sending out too much data and the target is and the receiver is not ready, the receiver can slow it down. Now the simplest process is acknowledgments. You can send one window size full of data and then you have to wait for an acknowledgement. And if I'm not done, it'll take time to give you acknowledgement. But you can also, the, the client can also complain my buffer is full. I don't want any more data at all. It sends an acknowledgement with a window size of zero. Now a window size of zero is like putting a call on hold. It says, wait and send me that data later. In fact, every TCP implementation tested by a lot of people has the flaw that that stuff waits in RAM and as far as we can tell, it never times out, at least not in any reasonable amount of time. So all you have to do is make a lot of connections, send SYNAC, ACK, and when you send the ACK, you set the window size to zero. And that will back up the RAM on the server and just chew it up. But it, so if, when it works right, let's, it was working pretty recently, the machine everything's just set to go here. I should see some connections. Oh, good. I should be able to get like three or 4,000 connections per second out of this thing. Ah, oh, there we are. That's what I wanted to show you. So there's the attacker, and there's the target. 
you have to get a powerful machine. The black hat that taught me about this takes over servers. He said some website was up yesterday. And the point of this thing is this can use up all the RAM and then the thing starts struggling. You see the RAM go up and down, the CPU goes up and down, the screen goes black. It starts squirming like a worm on a hook. And often the result is it crashes this machine so bad that you can't even shut it down or you just have to pull the plug. <laughs> and the black hats describe this by saying you can take websites down and they are gone forever. They just never come back. Which I believe is true for, for low grade amateur websites like porn sites and stuff. They probably don't have any backups. They probably have some sleazy shared hosting and after it crashes they can't really put it back. I mean clearly even a nuclear bomb couldn't take down Google. They just have more servers and backups somewhere. But you can certainly take down an amateur website this way. And it doesn't matter how much RAM you have. It will just chew through it. And I got it to work on Backtrack, but it only works at about one third of the speed. Um, anyway, on Kali, not Backtrack. Anyway, that's, that's probably the most important thing. This thing's been around since 2008, and nobody's patched it, <laughs> which I think is because it hasn't been easy to set up. So I've got the Kali version of it, and I've got... Uh, what, uh, what repo did you go to to get it out of your house? Uh, it's not a good repo. You, you just uh, you need a bunch of irritating crypto libraries, but they're in Kali by default. So in Kali, all you have to do is download the source code. And so if you want to do this, which I highly recommend, at least, see, the backtrack version is not as fun for a demo, but I think it's good enough that you could make a defense. For example, so make a firewall rule that stops these things, um, and you could test to see if it's working. So if you want to do that, go to my webpage, samsclass.info, and I got a page about sock stress here. Um, so I explain, have various demos, and then I explain how I did it. Um, but uh, here's various tests of it in various conditions. There are a bunch of variations of the attack, but they all work about the same. And um, someplace on here, I do have the link where you can get the source code and put it on Backtrack. Um, yeah, here's the exact instructions. Yeah, I still get it from there. I guess I put it on my website because the official Outpost website was down. This is this stuff was all done by Outpost 24, a security company. I think my representative was around here. But anyway, there's um. All right, so I don't know if I ought to quit. There's, um, yeah, the other one I really can't do without another computer I didn't bring with me. There's one that kills Windows 8 with the blue screen of death, but you need another machine for that. So I think that's all I got to show you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I did. <laughs> all right, any other questions right now? <laughs> all right. <laughs> well,